This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447-103-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar. Or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call 813-527-1276. Staff will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This project is located in Seminole County, along State Road 46 from Monroe Road, Uppsala Road, also known as County Road 15, to French Avenue in the city of Sanford. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 447-103-1. As mentioned, the project corridor is located along State Road 46 for approximately 2.9 miles. This project has been broken down into three sections based on the design needs of each section. Section 1 from Monroe Road, Uppsala Road, to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Section 2 is from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Wilner Circle. Section 3 is from Wilner Circle to French Avenue. So, why are we doing this project? In a word, safety. According to Signal 4 Analytics crash data from 2017 to 2021, this section of State Road 46 has been the site of multiple crashes involving pedestrians and bicyclists, including four fatal crashes. With these tragic events in mind, 
the Florida Department of Transportation is actively taking all possible steps to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and serious injuries on state roadways. Therefore, this corridor has been identified as a candidate for additional pedestrian and bicycle safety improvements as part of the planned resurfacing project. Currently, this segment of State Road 46 has a high demand for different modes of transportation. Certain determining factors such as traffic speed, a need for safe crossings, and better connectivity for pedestrians and bicycles, and multiple link stops have guided the design for this project. The purpose of this project is to enhance public safety and repave this section of State Road 46 to extend the life of the roadway. Some of the proposed improvements include converting the existing two-way left turn lane into raised medians with directional median openings, installing pedestrian activated lights, landscaping medians to calm traffic, adding buffered bicycle lanes, and constructing more mid-block crossings to provide safer crossing opportunities for both pedestrians and bicyclists. Now we will take a more detailed look at the three sections mentioned and the improvements proposed for each section, starting with Section 1. This is an illustrated typical section or cross-section of State Road 46 between Monroe Road Uppsala Road, and Airport Boulevard. It shows the proposed roadway elements that would appear in this section of the project. Now, let's change our point of view and look at the more specific changes that are being proposed in Section 1. At the intersection of State Road 46 and Central Park Drive, the department proposes to install high-visibility crosswalks with pedestrian refuge areas. A pedestrian activated signal, called a pedestrian hybrid beacon, or PHB, is also proposed along this section of the project corridor at Arrow Lane. PHBs improve safety for pedestrians as they increase the visibility of the crosswalk. We will learn more about PHBs in a moment. In addition, the existing median opening east of Arrow Lane will be closed and the opening at Meish Road will be converted to a directional median opening by a private developer. The FDOT will also modify the existing median in front of Central Church. Improved access to Lynx Transit bus stops is also planned along this corridor. Section 2 focuses on the area from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Wilner Circle and includes the bridges and approaches to the CSX Railroad. Section 2 has two different typical sections. Typical Section 2A shows the proposed roadway elements for the area between Airport Boulevard and Wilner Circle. Some of these elements include median landscaping and buffered bicycle lanes with green pavement markings. Section 2B shows the proposed roadway elements for the bridge over the CSX Railroad. As you can see, the buffered bicycle lanes with green pavement markings continue over the bridge. When we look at this section from a different point of view, we can see that the department plans to add high visibility crosswalks with pedestrian refuge areas at Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and Airport Boulevard. A new right turn lane is also proposed for Airport Boulevard. A raised mid-block crosswalk with a pedestrian activated light is planned between Terwilliger Lane and Persimmon Avenue. Based on further analysis, the department may install a PHB or an RRFB, which is a rectangular rapid flashing beacon. An RRFB is another type of pedestrian activated lighted crosswalk that improves safety and visibility for pedestrians. We'll also learn more about RRFBs in a moment. Buffered bicycle lanes are proposed to help improve bicycle safety by separating bicyclists from vehicle traffic. These bicycle lanes will have green pavement markings, which will serve to increase visibility and encourage slower traffic speeds. Section 3 looks at the areas between Wilner Circle and French Avenue. First, we will look at the typical section between Wilner Circle and Avocado Avenue. 
Some of the proposed roadway elements to note are the landscape medians, continued green bicycle lanes, narrower travel lanes, and a reduced speed limit. Let's look at Section 3A a little differently. Currently, this section has no existing bicycle lanes, no crosswalks, a posted speed of 40 miles per hour, and 12-foot travel lanes. To create safe passage for pedestrians along this corridor, two more raised mid-block crossings with RRFBs are planned between Persimmon Avenue and Pomegranate Avenue and between Oleander Avenue and South Mangustine Avenue. As mentioned before, more buffered bicycle lanes with green pavement markings for higher visibility are also planned. The proposed speed limit is being reduced to 35 miles per hour, and travel lanes will be narrowed to 11 feet in order to accommodate the bike lanes and calm traffic. As Section 3 continues, let's look at the areas between Avocado Avenue and French Avenue. In this proposed typical section, the travel lanes are once again reduced to 11 feet, and the proposed speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Currently, this section has 4-foot existing bicycle lanes, no crosswalks, 12-foot travel lanes with a two-way left turn lane in the center, and a posted speed of 40 miles per hour. A raised mid-block crossing with RRFB is planned between Avocado Avenue and Poplar Avenue to provide another opportunity for pedestrians to have safe passage along this corridor. The department also plans to install a raised median from Avocado Avenue to French Avenue with directional median openings at the intersection of State Road 46 and Poplar Avenue, as well as the intersection of State Road 46 and Holly Avenue. Other proposed improvements include restriping bicycle lanes with green pavement markings for higher visibility and, once again, reducing the proposed speed limit to 35 miles per hour and narrowing travel lanes to 11 feet in order to accommodate raised medians and calm traffic. So, what exactly is a PHB? A pedestrian hybrid beacon, or PHB, is an overhead traffic signal that is designed to provide increased visibility and protection for vulnerable road users at mid-block crossing locations. A PHB consists of two side-by-side -side red lights that are mounted above a single yellow light. The lights remain dark until they are activated by pedestrians wishing to cross. Once the PHB is activated, yellow lights will begin to flash, followed by solid red lights requiring drivers to stop. When the red lights begin to flash, drivers must stop but can proceed with caution once the crosswalk is cleared. PHBs are most effective in the areas with higher posted speeds. And what exactly is an RRFB? A rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRFB, consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. RRFBs are most effective in areas with lower posted speeds. Moving forward, the design on this project is in progress and anticipated to be completed in summer 2023, with a total cost of $1.7 million. The improvements on this project will be constructed entirely within the existing right-of-way and therefore will not require property acquisition. Construction for this project is anticipated to begin in the summer of 2024 at an estimated cost of $10.9 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time,
Those submitted by August 15th, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. Those attending in person are invited to ask questions and share feedback with the project team during the meeting. To submit a comment for the project's public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to the project staff. To submit a comment or question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447103-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at anthony.miller at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542 DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5530 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 447103-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, Please submit them by Monday, August 15, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447103-1. Have a good evening.